coming up on Pushing Boundaries. Well, we decided to run the Pony Express to commemorate the 150th anniversary of the crazy mailman that went from Sacramento to St. Joe, Missouri and back. We wanted to see if a human could do it. I mean, if you think about trying to run 50 miles a day for 45 to 50 days straight is an endurance feat that's never been done. Pushing Boundaries, I'm Pat Parnell. And I'm Maureen Ramey. Most people, myself included, would consider a marathon a very challenging task, but Carl Meltzer is not most people. No, definitely not. Carl calls a marathon a warm-up, and for most ultra runners such as Carl, it pretty much is. Endurance runs, ultra marathons, these races are up to 100 plus miles long and often take place in extreme conditions, up and down mountains, and in places like Death Valley, where the temperatures can reach over 130 degrees Fahrenheit. And Carl is one of the very best ultra runners in the world. Having won more ultra races than anyone, he set his sights on a different goal, to run the route of the Pony Express on the 150th anniversary of its founding. The original route from Sacramento, California to St. Joseph, Missouri is some 2,000 miles long and traverses mountains, deserts, and plains. Carl attempted the route by running 50 miles per day, 40 days straight. I started running behind my dad when I was 12 years old. He started running just because his neighbor started running. He followed him, I followed them, and then before you know it, I was beating them within, you know, a couple four months. And, uh, and then I just loved it. Carl is probably the best ultra runner on earth, having won, you know, more ultra races than anyone else. He's won, you know, the Hard Rock 100, probably the hardest 100 miler in the country numerous times. He's won the Wasatch 100 miler six times. Then it kind of evolved into this kind of thing where, again, I kind of keep raising the bar and keep going further. Still good, legs still good, body's good, well rested, another day at the office. We'll fuel you up here, and after we do that, you'll continue on all the way, and then maybe we'll hook up with you at Folsom Lake. Day one in Sacramento, Old Town Sacramento, here at the uh, Pony Express statue, ready for the Red Bull Human Express. And uh, got a message from my wife saying good luck. Probably gonna need a little luck. Interestingly enough, it coincided with his second day, which was a bad day, a slow day, a day he didn't feel good. Starting to get sore. But I'm just trying to hold myself back and be smart, really. I know I can make it if I just keep my keep my head in the game. And it's early. I'll probably have a breakdown eventually. While Carl admits a breakdown may be in his future, he is presently on day six doing hard running in the Sierras in western Nevada, where the miles along Highway 50, the loneliest in the country, are taking a toll on his body. Uh, it's day seven. Um, just taping my feet. It's going to be standard procedure for a while. Just got to catch up with some issues. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're on a uh, bacon slice number 52. Ed and I surveyed the area um, about four or five weeks ago, and uh, I kind of recognize things as they come to them. Hopefully, we won't have any issues in areas that we weren't able to scope. Um, that's why we have the Tom car. Yeah, I'll put your scouting. Today. I'll go as far as I can till dark, yep. and then uh, meet you guys in Austin. 
I've been working on the Tom car a lot. Pre-running stuff, throwing out some ribbons for Carl if there's a fork in the road. I just asked Carl, you don't want to be thinking about where he's going at all, like if he has to make a right or a left or anything like that. It takes his mindset out of running. Personally, so far, I've gained a lot of respect for nature and the vastness and the scope of this project and isolation and water. I mean, you realize how important water is. Without it, you're dead, literally. So let me just ask you, you took the right side of that Y, and then you came pretty quickly to another road, right? It joined up. And then which way did you go there? Carl doesn't really know where he is. He's out of water, he's out of gels, and he's talking to some ATVers, and I think they're gonna give him water. I'm freaked out that Carl is in the middle of nowhere with no more water. And, you know, that really kind of plays into your mind a lot. You're like, oh my god, this guy's going to dehydrate himself. The route looks really straightforward, but it's not. It's lots of dirt roads and very confusing double track. And some of them peter out, and some of them go through private land, so they get dead-ended sometimes. So Ted had plotted the route, what he saw on the map, and was flagging in the Tom car yesterday, but he didn't get the whole route done. So he essentially wasn't able to verify that this pass we were going through got us where we wanted to go. We had our maps and, and GPS and everything, but you know, there's not like a locator. Where is Carl? He is exactly right here, real time. We don't have that. Lindsay and I discussed what to do because Ted had gone, you know, a different route uh, to find him. She tore off looking for him. Welcome back. The original Pony Express took 157 horses, 120 riders, and 14 days to complete. Carl Meltzer attempted to cross those same 2,000 miles in 40 days by himself on foot. Pony Express riders had numerous obstacles from extreme temperatures to starvation. Now, in attempting Red Bull's Human Express, Carl and his team had similar challenges. For example, getting lost in the Nevada desert with no water. So let me just ask you, you took the right side of that Y, and then you came pretty quickly to another road, right? It joined up, and then which way did you go there? I'm freaked out that Carl is in the middle of nowhere with no more water. So there's a ton of anxiety, and you know, you're out on, standing on the top of this thing with binoculars, searching for something, and it's, it freaks you out. It's nerve wracking, because this guy's life really is in your hands. And you know, you come up over a, a hill or around a bend and you see him and it's like, oh, thank goodness, there he is. And it, it's, it's been a little rough. It's so discouraging if you go the wrong way, even if it's for two tenths of a mile. It's just like, ugh, you know, because that's four tenths of a mile that you went the wrong way, it's another eight minutes. Not that it's a race again, but it's just frustrating to know that I could be on the other side of that mountain, probably if everything was perfect. When you do stuff that like this, you never know what's gonna happen. You just roll it out. Oh, we've reached day 11. 12. 12, I don't know what day it is. But, you know, my feet are the issue, really. Seems like I might be stopping for a day off in Salt Lake in a few days. Um, maybe that'll solve all my problems. The struggle we have day to day, we're in a confined space with each other and we all go through little lows and highs. Personally, at times we collide. Eat that bacon, there's some non burnt pieces on there. Relax, I'm drinking this. Six thirty in the morning. Yes, there are some issues uh, with crew friendliness. I'm not judging, I was just asking. No. Can I grab that place? Yeah, no, you can't. Yeah. Grab that place. Uh, Sorry, just relax. 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 No, we might be getting along, and then you feel like, okay, any second, like, someone's gonna be pissed. And it's either gonna be funny or it's gonna be like intense. It's really important that we pull it together because it will affect Carl eventually if we're not all if we're not all functioning properly. You're awesome. Keep it going. You're doing great. 
kind of hoping that everybody's happy. Yeah, it's about me and about getting the miles done. And, you know, and everyone has their role. And I think everyone has to find their roles right now and then just accept that and that's what it is. Hopefully that everything's just clicking smooth. You know, it's supposed to be smooth. It's not always smooth. <laughs> Say that again? Um, I'm gonna make sure they are, yeah. He asked me to share some gold. One beer in this car. That's not good. <laughs> oh, hey. Look who's here. Another day, another pity. Most unique thing, I think, that someone would never think to ask on an ultra-endurance event like this is uh, how many beers Carl has drank. And it's a lot. <laughs> I mean, I try to give him a recovery drink the second he sits down. And he loves a recovery drink, and he sits down and drinks it. But the next thing out of his mouth is, where's my beer? So the question is, what makes you like to It's day 15. We're starting off a little bit earlier than normal. It's 5.56. We're at Faust Road in Utah. We're hoping to make it to my house in San Diego. 70 miles away. Today was like a culture shock. Coming into all these roads and traffic, it's, we, we're used to pulling over and turning around wherever we want. Yeah, we've been in a desolate environment for a long time. And then finally, when we reached Saratoga Springs in Utah, it was like, bam, suburbia. Personally, I've just been reminded and reconnected with, uh, you know, some really special things about life that I, I love, and it's highs and lows, and it's just nice to to feel the intensity of it. I'm pretty excited to get to Salt Lake City. I mean, I expect to see a bunch of friends, and yeah, I'm interested to see what's going to happen there. I don't know yet. Welcome back, everyone, to Pushing Boundaries. In the Hard Rock 100-mile endurance run, competitors climb almost 34,000 vertical feet. That's more than Mount Everest. Then they descend the same amount for a vertical change of almost 68,000 feet over 100 miles. Carl has won the Hard Rock multiple times, so he's no stranger to altitude, but he's never attempted to run 50 miles a day for 40 days straight. When he left his family in Utah, he was headed for the highest point on his trail. Pretty excited to head out from my house now because we're kind of going over a mountain route for the next three days, and then I get to run all downhill for a long time on trail, that is, which is really cool. I know some other friends want to run with me. I'm going to call a few tonight if they want to go over the mountains with me. Um, I always warn them that I'm not going to go that fast, but uh, like, oh, I don't care, I don't care, but we're not going that fast. <laughs> the break yesterday was, was a good thing. It's, uh, it's obvious that it helped a lot. Oh, my feet feel great. The new shoes make a big difference, too. Morning, it's day 20. We're figuring out our route for this morning. We're headed off to uh, through the fabulous town of Grange, Wyoming, and then moving forward to Farson. And once again, for the 20th time, let's hope that my tendonitis doesn't bother me. So we need a 40 mile an hour headwind here, blowing from the east. We're on our way to uh, Scotts Bluff, and then we're going to nitpick our way into the grid system of Nebraska. What Carl is doing here, he has rewritten my understanding of the word endurance. I know friends that are in shape, they go ski all day or, you know, this and that. Carl runs all day, and it's nonstop. And, I mean, it seems like he just gets stronger as the day goes on. Congratulations. Oh, thanks a lot. I won again. <laughs> 21 in a row. Can't even find anybody coming up behind you yet. They dropped him early. So we shower. Eric Bells is in the house, and uh, it's really nice to have him along. And just he brings new energy, a new vibe, new sense of humor. He said today he might take it easy, and he's already at mile, you know, 43 or something. To me, that's not taking it easy. I race against that 50 mile guy, but I might slow down a little, so we'll see what happens. Mile 45, he knows where he's at, what he's got left in the tank. And every time, mile 45 comes up, he's like, I'm going to keep going. So here again, you know, mile 45 turns into mile 53. Honestly, I could go further every day. I could still run 55 to 60 miles every day, and I do the same. But I'm kind of just hanging back and biding my time before I do something stupid. Day 
31, and I've uh, run for 30 days. So it's just been routine, you know, 50 to 55 miles a day, and you kind of get your legs after 20 days or so. As of yesterday, he has run 13 days, 18 hours and 46 minutes. He has run 1,526.44 miles. He's burned 83,671 calories. Yeah. You said that you started in Salt Lake? Uh, no, Sacramento, September 15th. Sacramento. I don't think locals know what to say to me. They kind of look at me and kind of strange and see this little skinny guy like, huh. Hey, the police have been great. I've been pulled over three times by the police so far. <laughs> what the hell are you doing out here? It's not you like... lost? <laughs> it is funny how people ask, well, how many shoes you go through? And I say maybe seven or eight. And it's like, wow, that's a lot. But if you look at the miles, yeah, I blew through a pair of shoes in nine days, but I went 460 miles. Everybody's been great. Locals are just, just doesn't really sink in right away, that's all. All of you, have a safe all right. trip. All right, we go. <laughs> okay. Take care. Thanks, Kay. I think, the, you know, his feet would be all crooked, or the bottoms of his feet would be one blister, but his feet are perfect. It, sh it shouldn't be like that. You know, it's, a, it's hours and hours, day after day, on your feet, on your body, on your joints, on your tendons. Yeah, he makes it look easy because he's the elite of elite in his sport. I mean, he golfed yesterday. Yeah, we're taking a break. We're here at the Hebron Country Club, and we're going to rip a few off the tee box and uh, push the golf. His style is not to sit in a golf cart and, you know, go to his ball. He'll, he likes to walk, of course. And I'm thinking to myself, this guy just ran 23 miles. He's going to golf nine, and then he said he was going to change and go back out. And that's exactly what he did. Day 39, we're all prepped for uh, the last final 100 miles. I'm excited to run 100, too, to really challenge myself a little bit. Should be interesting. Welcome back. As Carl approached the end of his goal of retracing the route of the Pony Express, he had two days left to run to reach St. Joseph, Missouri. Yeah, at that point, he had run 50 miles per day for the last 38 days. That's roughly the equivalent of running 73 marathons in 38 days. And to put his stamp on the event, he decided to combine the last two days into a single 100-mile stretch, running nonstop for 20 hours. Day 40. We're 20 miles into it. 97 to go. The guy's gonna do 100 miles in one push. It's a pretty cool way to put his stamp on it. You know, I'm gonna miss these people. I'm gonna miss, you know, the morning breakfast, the crew stations, the dinners, the having a beer with Carl. Nice, nice work. Chris got the bottom. Sun's going down. First time crewing at night. It's going to get interesting. On our way to the we have like one more mile. All right, I would uh, hesitate going on Chickadee. It's pretty wet. Before Chickadee, between Antelope and Chickadee, I would go north. So I'm going left here, right? Left here. Yes, and then we have to change route because of uh, bad roads. So, I'm walk so just I'll follow you then. I'll turn. Okay. He's ready to get there. Like, it's not really that surprising that he's going like he's going. At 1.30 <laughs> in the morning. He's flying right now. This will be his fastest split, I bet you. <laughs> I'm 80 miles into it right now. It should be life another two hours. This experience has changed me, I, I would say. I think for me, it, it may have opened a couple doors to get out and, you know, and really do something and, and persevere through it. To watch him complete such a journey and know how long it's taken and, you know, mentally and physically, it's, it's hard to imagine. Carl's approaching his 90-mile mark. 
Fitzgerald's with him. It's just a beautiful sight to see those two run by here. I just feel really thankful for everything, for the opportunity, just seeing someone do something incredible. The most memorable thing about the Red Bull Human Express has just been uh, just the adventure of doing it. How many people get to do this? You know, I get to tell the story about 40 days on the road, running 50 miles a day. Remembering it is the coolest thing about it. That's it, we're done. And it feels great, it feels fantastic. Amazing, awesome, exciting. There's not one word, no way. Not after 41 days. I'm gonna cheer. <laughs> Carl and his team pulled off quite an accomplishment. He retraced the 2,000 mile route of the Pony Express in just 40 days. That's right, across two mountain ranges, a desert through the Great Plains, Carl pulled off a feat that in years gone by took 157 horses to complete. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Pushing Boundaries. Until next time, I'm Pat Parnell. And I'm Maylene Ramey. Thanks for watching.